So, come down the long straight roads, it's been perfect for a chase. This is really where the sprint gets set up. We're coming into the last 2K here. So, everything's gonna depend on the weather and the wind here on how you approach this section of the race. So, if you've got a, a tailwind, you wanna be right near the front, because it'll be super fast and very difficult to move up. With the prevailing winds here in Geelong, it's more likely to be a headwind. And as you come down into these dips, use a bit of speed off the hill and come out of the wheels. But it's all about positioning. But, uh, if it is gonna be a headwind, it'd be very easy to get swamped from behind by the group moving around out of the slipstream. So uh, you're really gonna have to rely on the teammates to keep you out of the wind and towards the front. And it's no easy task when you've got all the best cyclists from all over the world trying to do exactly the same thing. But plenty of room to move. If you get caught in, you know, there's a very wide road. You get organised and move back up. But this is where you're trying to save those last little bits of energy, suck in all the oxygen you can get. Because that final 700 metre drag up to the finish it's going to be Lactate City. So we're probably about 1.2k out from here. Maybe not even. Say so somewhere around here, we'll see the last kilometre. The red kite, the Flamme Rouge. Another difficult part of the final here is we, we go down this small hill coming into the last corner. The speed will just be incredible coming down this section to hit that last corner. And if you have to break coming into it, that could be your whole world's over right there and then with 700 metres to go. So you've got to get this section right. Come here and you'll swing in hard right and start to go up. But we come out of the corner, kicks up at about 4% out of the corner the first 150 metres and with it with an uphill finish a drag like this even if even if you are a little bit back the the lower speed because it's uphill gives you a chance to come back towards the front and like I said before the the prevailing wind should probably give a, a head or a head crosswind up this final straight so you want to be in position but also not too close to the front giving everyone an opportunity to smash over you from behind. But with this gradient up through town, you can't really just roll into the sprint. There's pressure on the pedals all the way up, so effectively it makes the sprint about 700 metres long. Also, you'll be able to see the finish from quite a long way out. And even though we're going to do, what is it, 11 laps of this course, go through the finish that many times and we'll be able to see it uh, when everybody recons the course the, the days before, it's still deceptive and for sure someone's going to get excited and have a go. But it's also the type of sprint where you can, you know, if you're not a, a great sprinter but you've, you've got a good attack, you can go from far and hope for the best. So guys will be hitting out all over the place. And, yeah, this, this course is going to be super important to have teammates, particularly for the sprinters, because you know, you're going to need that support, positioning coming onto the climb, uh, moving back towards the front after the climb, and then protecting you from the wind and bringing you into the, the final part of the race, saving as much energy as possible. So you know, this is really going to be a, a team race. And if all the, the major cycling nations do opt to support their sprinters and you know, we can all band together as teams and uh, ride with a similar tactic and give a sprinter a better chance of winning. So here we come up through the finish line. That is a serious kick up. So it won't be a case of just bashing it into the biggest gear and going. You're really gonna have to select carefully. So I've taken you for one lap around. I've already done six or eight during the week. I'm gonna go and do another couple now, do as much recon as I can so I just know this course back to front and then I can 
go over to Europe and uh, simulate a training course like this and you know, I'll, I'll know 100% in my own mind what it's going to be like, what I need to train for and uh, you know, that may, may be the little advantage that can help me become world champion in, in October this year.